out your tickets. Thank you so much for buying your tickets. You have done an amazing job. We are together going to leave a legacy. And uh, this week is the final lap. Tell your neighbor, final lap. Final lap. Say, say it one more time. Say it one more time. Final lap. Say it one more time. Final lap. Yeah, final lap. And uh, final laps are always amazing laps. So please make sure that you're telling your friends, you're telling your hobbies, you're telling everybody. This week we got into a fight with my wife. Not like this. I've never fought my wife like punch, what, what, never, never. 19 years of God's grace and peace in the house. Uh, uh, I've never beaten my wife. But this week we got into a fight. We were going back home. We are driving. I was driving. And then she says, you know, when we say tell your neighbors, tell your friends. Tell. Incidentally, when you're married, some of the people that you have as your friends are, they are your friends together. They are the same, right? Hey, come on, right? So, a few weeks ago, I called one of our friends and I told him, man, we are building and we have a concert and we are roofing and we are selling tickets. And so, uh, I asked him to contribute. And then I told him, we have targets. Even me, I have a target. And my wife also has a target. So, please help me and get behind me so that I can people are laughing, so that I can hit my target. He accepted. He said, I will do it. I will do it. But then I remember, I told him, I said, I think last year you came, you gave my wife. He said, no, I didn't give your wife. I gave you. I said, yes, even this year, give me. <laughs> so, we continue. So, yesterday we were going back home and we were in the car. And then she says, no, Friday actually, it was Friday. She says, oh, by the way, so and so sent me a half a million for to Zimbe. Now Tete is going to hit 10 million. I said, What? I said, Did you call him? He said, No. I said, I'm the one who called him. That's my money. It's not your money. It's supposed to go in my on my account so that I can also hit my. She said, No, 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 no. It is Natete money. I said, Natete money. I said, No, that's supposed to go behind my line. I said, I'm going to call him right now. He said, don't even bother the man. You just call him and thank him. <laughs> my wife is aggressive. So we talked, talked, talked. I said, if you did not tell him, that's my money. Anyway, happy wife equals happy life. So I let go. I kept quiet. I said, you know why? 500,000. You have to be a smart man. So while we were at home, I think the Holy Spirit touched her heart and she said, okay, I'm going to give you your 500,000. <laughs> so today when you see, hey, clap for my wife. <laughs> She's too aggressive for Natete. But that's a good fight, right? It means we all want the kingdom of God to progress. Isn't that right? Instead of fighting, fighting these other things of what, that, that's not good. These are good uh, fights. Hallelujah. So I've only told you that story to say this. Uh, even me, I'm telling my friends about to Zimbe. You also tell your friends about to Zimbe. Tell your friends about it. Amen? Yeah, great. Now, that's good. Uh, can we celebrate all our effective community leaders? This week we had 558 people in our community. Effective, and it rained, by the way, on Wednesday. 558. Can we just give him a big hand clap? Everybody that attended. Well done. Well done. Turn around. Ask your neighbor. Are you in an effective community? Ask them. Yeah. Wait for an answer. What did they say? No. Okay. If they don't have an effective community, you who has asked them at the end of a service, please take them to. Yeah. Or uh, what you do. Ask them where they stay. Now I've given you the responsibility. Ask them where they stay and then take them to the leader. Because most of you know these leaders, right? Yeah. These are good uh, uh, groups that meet during the week uh, to pray for one another, to uh, encourage one another. There we're able to spot leadership skills and we're able to groom leaders through those uh, uh, small little effective communities. So let's clap, let's clap, let's clap for all our leaders. We now... We now have 106 effective communities. Next year, June, we want to double that number. By June, we want to have 
over 212 effective communities next year. Yes. Let's clap. What that means, it means many things, but I know that it will open up a wider thing for everybody to be in an effective community. Today, I want us to go into uh, our sermon, but before we do that, I want you to ask your neighbor, what was your highlight for this week? Ask them, what made you excited and happy this week? All right, I hope they told you what made, made, uh, made them happy, but uh, <clears throat> let's go into the sermon. Today is a final sermon on to Zimbe, the final one. Next month is a beautiful month, and December is our month of thanksgiving. Come on, it's a good thing to be grateful. This week, there was something going on in our, our social platforms that said, a thankful person is what? Something to do with loyalty. We'll always keep loyal. Uh, so December is our Thanksgiving. Uh, today is a final sermon on to Zimbe. Now, as we conclude today, I want to preach. And my uh, title is, He is a Generational God. God is generational. He is a generational God. God's mind or God works generationally. God does not work with individuals who don't think generationally. If you want God to bless you, begin to function generationally. Begin to think generationally. Because generationally means you're not thinking about yourself, but you're thinking about the people that are coming after you. You're thinking about others, and that's God. God is always for others. A young man was born in a village in England in 1642. In a house that will be coming up on the screen right over there. And uh, his life was a very difficult life. He, his father died just before he was born. When he was born, he was born a premature. Today, when you're born a premature, uh, it is not as complex as it was then because today, there's a bit of technology to help. Then... It was difficult. You could easily die. He grew up, but for many years, he was a sickler. The mother had no job. The woman was very poor. Along the way, a 70-year-old man came and uh, proposed to this young lady, who was a mother of this young boy. This young lady was 19 years old, and the proposal came from a 70-year-old man. The lady said, yes. You can imagine the age difference. But the reason she said yes is because she was poor. She had nobody to help her. Nobody to fend for her. There was poverty all over the place. No food. But she accepted to go with a 70-year-old man. When they got married, or before they got married, the gentleman said, if you are going to... Uh, come and become my wife. Do not come with that child. And the young lady accepted. Dropped the child, gave the child, like many people do, take the child to Jaja, take where, you know, off. They are off into this new love life. The young boy grew, and at about three years old, he realized that he had been dumped. He had been rejected. He had no support system. Uh, of course, as he grew up, he began to ask questions like, where's my mother, where's my father? And all these other questions. And he was told the stories of the father died, but the mother dumped him to go and get married to a 70-year-old man. One day, this young man, of course, joined school as he continued to grow. And uh, in that village in England, a gentleman called John Houston 
moved to that village and uh, he joined this school and began to teach at this school. John Houston was a Christian. He was a teacher, but he was a Christian. This young man, because of the tragedies of life, they messed him up. And while in school, he was a rough boy. He, was, he did not trust people. Never trusted men. Never trusted women. Never trusted people. He was rough. He was chaotic. And he began uh, uh, doing so many things that were chaotic. Because of his lifestyle, he never, his grades were not good. His grades were never good. And every time grades would come back after they've done tests, there would be comments. I remember when we were doing tests and exams, your teacher would write on the paper, they would write comments. How many of you went through that, those kind of schools? I did. Wonderful. They write comments. So they would write a comment on the paper and say, they, consistently there was a teacher who wrote three comments on his paper uh, every time the paper came back after marking. The first comment was, you are a lazy boy. The second comment was, you cannot learn. And the third comment was, you are good for nothing. Those three comments were very consistent. John Houston, when he came to the school, however, his eyes landed on this chaotic boy. And because he was a Christian, he began to pray for this boy. And he prayed and he prayed. And then he picked interest and he began to disciple this boy. Here we talk about discipleship. We disciple men and women to become or to walk in the purpose of God, the, the, the purpose that God has for their lives. It's very important to be discipled. Come on. Yes, very important. Especially, especially if you're a Christian. Very important. Now, John Houston uh, picked up this boy and, and he helped him. And gradually as he was discipling him and praying for him, the young boy began to excel in his academics. John Houston took on uh, the effort and began to also sponsor him. And he took him to university. And as he continued to help him, his grades continued to improve. Specifically in physics, in mathematics, and in chemistry. He became a very smart young man. And uh, in his smartness, he did so many things. I think the people on projection need to uh, keep up. Uh, he, become, he became very, very smart and kept doing whatever he needed to do. Now, after so many years, after so many years of John Houston discipling this young man, the young man became the talk of England and he became the talk of the world. And his name is Sir Isaac Newton. Let's clap our hands better than that. Why am I telling you this story? I'm telling you this story because Sir Isaac Newton began, all those of you who are scientists, you know that he uh, came up or he invented or discovered so many things. So many things behind Sir Isaac Newton, like Newton's uh, orbital cannon. Uh, and so many other things that I don't want to talk about, the rainbows and white light, uh, 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 Newton and the reflecting telescope, and so many other things. But I'm telling you this story. Isaac, Sir Isaac Newton, only became what he became because there was a Christian man who was mindful of the next generation, who said, even if this young man is looked at as a nothing. I will pick him up. At the point where John Houston was, he was a teacher. Life was going on well. He had everything he needed. And many of us are like that. We are not too badly off. We are okay. But your life must never be about you. Your life must always be, think about how you can help somebody else. Think about how you can grab somebody's hand. Think about how you can be a blessing to the next generation. 
And that's exactly what uh, John Houston did. And that's exactly what we're about here at Community Life. My friends, as we build this building, we are not only building, we're not putting block and mortar together. That's not what we're doing. We are actually building this building that will bring all of us together. But as we come together, we are building lives. We are discipling men and women who are going to become important in this country, who are going to become important on the continent of Africa, who are going to become important in the nations of the world. Nobody ever knew that Sir Isaac Newton will be that. And nobody knows what you're going to become or what the next generation is going to become. But when we come into this space, we are raising men and women that will make a difference in the world. So when we talk about to Zimbabwe, we're talking, it's beyond the ticket that you're buying. It's beyond what you're thinking. It's transformation that we are talking about. It's transformation that we're talking about. So Tuzimbe is really for impacting the next generation. As you buy that ticket, you are saying, I want the next generation to be blessed. I want the next generation to be impacted. Because for many generations, this church building will be here forever. And it will transform many lives. My mom is watching right now, and I love my mom very much. Let's give her a big hand clap. My mom uh, loves the church and loves God. A few weeks ago, uh, she called me up and she said, I am going home, village. Uh, it's village, but it's home. I'm going home. I need to go. I feel the urge to go and pray for our church in the village. And, uh, of course, yeah, she went, and she went with my our sister and my brother, my brother, uh, they went and they prayed. That is in Iganga, deep, deep down in the village. And uh, they got there on time, got into the service and prayed. You can imagine somebody coming from Kampala just to go and pray from there because she just felt like I just need to go and pray from there today. And then she came back the same day. Um, the highlight of that story is this. My grandfather, who I got an opportunity to see briefly before he died, before he, he passed on, had a lot of land. And he gave land to the church. By the way, let me say this. If you have land eh, somewhere and you feel led to give it to the church, give it to us. We shall plant churches there. Yes. Yes. So my grandfather gave land to the church. And a uh, big piece of land. And then he also contributed big time to building the church build the first church building that was there. And then he also contributed big time to building um, a school which is on the same property. Now, when my, the act that my grandfather did was not really for him. The act that my grandfather did was for generations. Because my grandfather today has not been there for a very long. He passed on a long time ago in the 90s, if I remember right. But look, the church is still progressing and the school is still progressing. Meaning what? Many lives are being blessed. Yes, clap your hands better than that. <laughs> and maybe that's why we as his grandchildren are being blessed today. Because... He was thinking generationally. This generation has a challenge. This generation, we are not living selfless lives. We are living selfish lives. We want everything to be about us. We want everything. We want to satisfy our own desires. When you're thinking about life, you're thinking about yourself. You're not thinking about others. This church will be a different church. We will be mindful of the next generation, mindful of our children, mindful of our grandchildren, mindful of our great-grandchildren. So to Zimbe is really about that. A couple of years from today, when the Lord calls us home, we will not be here, but this church will be here. And lives will be transformed. And there will be a blessing. You will not be here, but your descendants will be here. Your children will be here. Your children's children will be here. And that blessing will go for them. Let me tell you something. Don't ever think that you're prospering because of the prayers that you're praying. Many of us are 
prospering because of the many good deeds that our parents did. Many of us are prospering because of the many good deeds that our grandparents did. So you also set a platform for your children and for your children's children and for your children's children. And so that's what Tuzimbe is all about. Uh, John, sorry, Exodus chapter 3 and verse 15. As we, as we do this, we are paving ways for the next generation. We are shining a light. We are blazing the trail. We are holding the baton and we are running so hard, ready to pass it on to the next generation and say, this is what we have done. Continue from here and fly higher than we have flown. Exodus chapter 3 and verse 15. Let's read from the screen. Please give me a very loud and clear read. One, two, three, go. Wonderful. He says, he's the God of Abraham and the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob. It's very easy to read those, those, that statement and read those as names. Those are not just names of individuals. Those names represent different generations. The generation of Abraham, the generation of Isaac, and the generation of Jacob. Because Abraham was the father of Isaac. And Isaac was a father of Jacob. So this shows that he's a God of generations. The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. Those are three generations. And God says he is generational. He says in the same verse, this is my name forever. What's my name forever? I am a generational God. And this is my memorial to what? To all generations. That word all includes us. We are among all the generations. Huh? This is my memorial to all generations. What a name. God is generational. So since our father is generational, father God, then we also must think generationally. And anybody that works generationally will be blessed. We must do things that impact generations. You know, uh, just for the few years I have been in ministry, a few years ago I made a decision that I don't want to do things now that are going to impact one person. I want to do things that will impact many people. I used to do many things that will impact one person, one person, one person, even as a church, one person, until I got to a place where I began to think critically. And I thought, now I don't want to do something that will bless only one I want to do things that will bless more than one person. More than one, many people. If I'm, running, if I'm helping somebody medically, I don't want to help one person. I want to help many people medically. If I am running uh, anything, I want to do something that will impact many people. And God is like that. God is generational. And so we must be mindful of the next generations. In Exodus chapter 33, Exodus Chapter 33, we will not read that, but you can go back and read that chapter. And in there, Moses comes into the tabernacle. Tabernacle was a place, God's dwelling place. And he brings Joshua into the tabernacle many times. And in Exodus chapter 33, uh, at this point, Joshua is about 17 years old. At 17 years old, Moses is bringing this young man into the tabernacle. And he's saying, I am going with you. Moses is already doing well as a man of God. But what is he doing to bring a 17-year-old boy? He's saying, you know what? In as much as I am doing well as an old man, as a man of God, I want to think about the next generation. Joshua, come, let's go together. That is the mind of God, or such is the mind of God. And this is what we're doing into Zimbe. We are introducing the next generation into the presence of God. When we build this building, when we build this temple, this is an altar. When we build this place, what we're doing is we are introducing the many that we know and those that we don't know. Those that will come. Let me uh, say this. 
all of us who are here really don't know each other, except people who are here and your family. If your family, all right, you have a brother here, you have a sister here, it's okay. But most of us or all of us really are strangers. What brings us together is because we love God. And we have met here. And we have become brothers. And we love one another. You know your neighbor's name. They are not a stranger. What brings us together is one day there was a group of people that bought this property. One day there is a group of people that is continuing to build this. And so together there is a landmark here. When people here on the village, there's a church here, they will come. What unites us is what we are doing right now for God. Otherwise, we don't know each other. Is that correct? Likewise, there are many other people that are going to come after this. They just walk here as individuals. And after they walk here, then they find another brother. They love that brother. They connect. They begin to pray for one another. There are many brothers who have walked into church and they're just single brothers and single sisters. From this point, they've gotten husbands and wives and they have gotten married. What brought them to this place is because some people were generationally mindful and they said, let's put this thing together that will bring us together as brothers and sisters, that will help many people, not just now, but forever. And that is exactly what Tuzimbe is all about. It's for generations. It's not just for individuals. Yeah, I tell you, I would focus on building my house. I would focus on amassing wealth. I would focus on so many things. But I have found that this is for me. I'm actually very happy. I'm, very, I'm a very happy man. I'm very happy. I'm happy because now even if I went to be with the Lord, there's something I've done that will impact generations forever. Yes. Besides what I may have as an individual, all right? I think if you have a house, great. And you need to have a house. You must have a house, all right? If you have a house, it's great. But that house is only going to serve you and a few people. This house will serve hundreds and thousands and thousands of people and millions for years until Jesus returns. So to invest in this, to buy a ticket... It should be a joy. It should be a joy because we are focusing on the next generation. It's not just us. In 1 Kings chapter 19, again, we'll not read that, but you can go back and read that story. Uh, Elijah and Elisha. It's a story of Elijah and Elisha. Uh, Elijah was mindful of the next generation. He was, that's why I said, you see, when you look at all this, look at Moses. Look at how God used Moses. Do you know why God used Moses? Because Moses was mindful of the next generation. If you want God to do amazing things in your life, think about the next generation. Don't be thinking about yourself. I was in Rwanda and I was teaching on doing business. And I was telling the people, I asked the people, I said, why do you want to do business? Why? I do business. I'm into business. If you don't know, uh, I, do a, I run a business, some of you know, most of you know, unique business. I, I do dogs, I train dogs, I train dogs and train people. Incidentally, it's easier to train people, sorry, to train dogs than people. Yeah, I train dogs. And uh, I import dogs, I export dogs, I do all sorts of things with dogs. I got, a, I got a business deal recently that I have not yet sealed properly, but it's coming through. I am importing, I will be impo- if it goes through, I will be importing a dog worth 90 million shillings for a serious Ugandan. Eh? Eh. Once the serious Ugandan seals the deal, the dog is worth 90. Mi- it's not jokes. We're not joking. Yeah. If you didn't know there are dogs like those, 90 million. May the Lord give you money. 
Now somebody is saying, I think I need to go into dog business. <laughs> uh, uh, serious Ugandan. That's business. That's part of my business. But the Lord has blessed our business so much. And I didn't even look for this Ugandan. I received a text message. Uh, and uh, the person said, uh, I would like to uh, I've been given your number. There is a business deal. And um, uh, me, I don't know about these things, but I want to connect you to the real person who wants the dog. I said, no problem. Give him my number. If you know that they are authentic people, because I only deal with them. I don't deal with by eye. So they gave him my number. And yeah, we are talking. Now, I don't advertise. I, I don't advertise, by the way. I have clients that most of my clients have just come just like that. Miracle. They are miracle clients. But when, we were starting, when I was starting that business, this is what I told God. I said, God, this business is for the extension of your kingdom. And I'm now, I've now gone into business. I'm teaching. I said, God, this business is for the extension of your kingdom. Mindset is very important as you're doing whatever you're doing. Motive is very important as you're doing what you're doing. Why are you doing what you're doing? Is it for self-gratification? God does not want people who are just thinking about themselves. If you're opening up a business just to help you pay rent, to help you pay school fees, that is not enough. Open up a business that will affect and impact many people's lives beyond your life. Nobody said amen. Maybe we need a workshop on business. So that's what I told God. And you know what, what has happened? 2019, when we were starting this business, when we were starting this uh, church, that business fully funded the opening of Community Life Church for one and a half years. Our business. Yes. Because we said it is for the extension of God's kingdom. It's not just for us. It's not just to satisfy us. It's not just to put food on my table. It is to impact many people's lives. That business bought these chairs that you're seated on. It paid rent for uh, the building. It paid whatever salaries. It bought equipment. Those speakers are now old. Uh, all the Literally all, most, most of the equipment that is here. Why wouldn't God bless your business when you're thinking like that? He just keeps bringing clients. Just keeps br and very serious clients, by the way. Very serious clients. Who don't bargain? Who buy dogs at 90 million shillings? Those are serious clients. Say amen. You will be there someday. But think generationally. Think beyond you. God works like that. So the story in... Uh, in 1 Kings 19, the story of Elijah and Elisha. Elijah is walking. And as he's walking, he sees a young man called Elisha. And what does the Bible say? He puts off his jacket and he throws it to Elisha. And the Bible says he moves on. What was he insinuating? He was saying, young man, if you have wisdom, follow me. And Elisha had wisdom. He followed the man of God. He went and sold off everything and gave everything away to follow Elijah. Elijah was interested in the next generation. Elisha walked with Elijah, did so many things, served the man of God. Up to a point where Elijah told Elisha, stop following me. And Elisha said, I will never stop following you. And then Elijah said, what do you want from me? What did Elisha say? I want a double portion of your anointing. Whatever you have, I want double. If you've been functioning in the signs and wonders, miracles, I want to do more than what you have been doing. Let me tell you something. If you want the anointing, if you want double of whatever we are doing, you have to follow and you have to follow hard. Yes. So he followed. He followed and he got it. Now, I was very interested 
I was very interested in, in these two lives. And I said, if he asked for a double portion of the anointing, let me do a study on the life of Elijah. And let me do a study on the life of Elijah. And I found out that Elijah performed eight miracles. Elisha performed 16 miracles recorded in the Bible. Meaning, the man, the young man that Elijah was interested in, the young man that Elijah, Elijah's mind ran to, the young man that Elijah helped performed more miracles than Elijah did. What's the point? There's a someone right there. Don't ever think right now that you're the best. Those who are coming after you, God has ordained that they will function better than us. Because to God, it's from glory to glory. Let me help you right now. Let me help somebody. Right, You have children. Your children will fly higher than you're flying right now. Your children will have more than you have right now. The children will do more than you have done right now. Your children will be more intelligent than you are right now. In the name of Jesus, that must be our desire. That is the way God has ordained it. I want my children to do more than I have done. If I have built one church building, let my children build ten church buildings. If I have bought a few pieces of land for the church, let my children buy many more. Come on. If I have one house, let my children have more than one for themselves. That is how God has ordained for things to be. That from generation to generation will fly higher. So Elijah... Sorry, Elisha performs more miracles than what Elijah, sorry, yeah, Elijah did. And this is what Tuzimbe is speaking. This is what Tuzimbe is all about. From this temple, we'll raise men and women that will do more than we have done. From this house, will come men and women that will do more than we have done. To Zimbe is saying the kingdom of God must double its impact. It must double its impact. We're not doing, yes, we're doing something. But those that are going to come into this building will do more than we have done. They will realize that there are people who gave their lives. There are people who gave their finances. There are people who were in this place and they sacrificed what they had to put together this thing. And we, our prayer is that they will do more than they have done. More than we have done. This is my prayer. This is my prayer. My prayer is that when the, before the day comes for me to go, I have seen a few men who have experienced this and I want to be among them. Before I go to be with the Lord, before he calls me home, I want to sit on that chair and see people that we have mentored stand here and do bigger things. Clap your hands better than that. Okay, let me explain it this way. Let me explain it this way. You are a father, you are a mother. Because you might not put it into your context, but let me help you. You are a father, you are a mother. It will be such a joy for you to see your children become responsible men and women. Get married, get jobs, and live good lives when you are still alive. That's a joy of every parent. Is that correct? It's such a pain to see your children. This last week, was it last week or two weeks ago? I saw a clip. Uh, a friend of mine sent me a clip of a young lady. Well, not really a young lady. It's a, I don't know, but mature lady. Yeah, in age. And this lady, uh, the story goes that she was, to, and I think all of you have seen this thing. She was stopped by the traffic people. And the traffic people, she refused to stop. I think she had committed a crime somewhere, so she refused to stop. And some, some, somewhere, somehow, they were able to get her. But there was a clip going around, and she was very aggressive with the police guys. Somehow, they were able to get her, and they took her to police. And she was very aggressive. So she, they called the mother, and I think she thought the mother would bail her out. When the mother came to the police, there was another clip going around when the mother had come. And the mother looked at the girl, the lady, lady, and said, I am very disappointed in you. He said, let them take you to jail. That's what the mother, I think she thought the mother would bail, but the mother said the opposite. Why? It is not a joy at all as a parent to see your children being involved in crime. 
And so as we build this thing, what we're saying is that we want our children to come here. We want many other people's children to come here. We want life and we want impact, positive impact in the next generation. <laughs> Clap your hands better than that, church. And so my prayer is the next generation, my children who are here in this church, the children of the ministers who are here in this church, who I made stand in the first service, and all of you, if you are a 19 and below, please stand. Actually, let me say this. Yes, I'm going to make a few people stand. If you are 19 and below, please stand. 19 and below, please stand. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Mildred, you're standing. Yeah, 19 and below. Let's clap for them. Clap, clap, clap louder than that. I'm going to release a prophetic blessing. You will do more than we have done in Jesus' name. You will do more, more than we have done. God is going to use you. In this church, God is going to use you. God is going to cause you to accomplish great and mighty things. Have your seats. That's 19 and below. If you are 39 and below, please stand. 39 and below. A generation is 40 years. Me, I'm already past 40. Yeah. Uh, 39 and below, please stand. Yes, wonderful. You will do many amazing things in the name of Jesus. I said you will do many amazing things in the name of Jesus. God is going to use you to look to the next generation. Come on, say amen to that. Please have your seats. Those who are 40 years and above, please stand. Those who are 40 years and above, 40 years and above, stand. 40 years and above. You're 40 and above. Okay. You see, there are very few. You, I have a question for you. What have you done for the next generation? This is an opportunity for us as community life. We are talking about generations to be mindful of the next generation. But, hey, please keep standing, keep standing, keep standing. God is going to use us. I am with you. God is going to use us. This is is the beginning of what God wants to do in our lives. He's going to use us to be able to accomplish great things and leave a great legacy on the earth. Yes. yes. Great legacy. A great name. Life will not just be about us. Let's clap for them. Please have your seats. Please have your seats. And that kind of church is the church that God is looking for. So really... To Zimbe and all other church related projects or programs that we're doing is about the next generation, the next generation, the next generation. That's what it's all about. This is not mine, this is for the next generation. I'm going to tell you, I'm going to share with you a few uh, stories today. A few illustrations about the next generation. So we've looked at Moses. He was interested in the next generation. Who was that? Joshua. And then we have looked at Elijah, the next generation. Who was that? Elisha. Now let me give you a few stories. Dr. Sande and Dr. Mirembe are here today. Can we give them a big hand clap? Yeah. They just came back from their honeymoon. My, my son was counting uh, yesterday. And he said, Daddy. Dr. Sandy and Dr. Mirembe are one week in marriage now. Somebody's counting. Well, it's not one week, it's two weeks now. Congratulations to you. But Dr. Sandy, I met Dr. Sandy when he was in senior three. I was doing school's ministry. It makes me feel like I'm an old man, but I'm not an old man. I'm a, by the way, I'm a young man. Stop calling me Muse. I'm not Muse. I am a very young man. Call me Yankee. <laughs> Uh, but, in, well, you know, there are things that make you feel like you're an old man. I was driving this week. Let me deviate a bit. I was driving this week on the express. And I got to the road, uh, road toll and I needed to pay my ticket. So I put my window down. And the lady looked at me and said, Pastor Henry. And I said, God bless you, my friend. How do you know me? And she said, you pastored me when I was in P7. What a blessing. I thought, P7. 
you're making me feel old. And yet I am young. But anyway, Dr. Sunday in Senior 3. In Senior 3, I was already a pastor when he was in Senior 3. What would a pastor be looking for from a Senior 3 student? Definitely nothing, right? I didn't even know what he was going to become. You know, today we have people who are, they are your friends because of your status or because of your title. That's all nothing. It's all rubbish. Yeah. God puts us in positions of authority or status to help other people. To be, he says, I will bless you so that you can be a blessing. So, as I was doing school's ministry, I would go to their school every Tuesday night. And I would minister to these uh, young men. And I was interested. And they, were in, they got interested in me. But he was one of those that kept following me. Uh, him and uh, Grace Mutesa Asida. Grace is a pastor at one of the churches in Boyogedere now. And even got married also about three weeks ago. Yeah, you see, my, my disciples get married around the same time. So if you are my disciple, you'll get married around the same time. Just, just be my disciple, don't worry. Yeah. Now, we began to walk together. And I began to disciple him. We're talking about being mindful of the next generation. And I began to disciple him. And then, he, you know, senior three, senior four, senior five, senior six, uh, university. Five years, I think it was. Is it five years in your medical thing? Five years. Five years. Now, he's a doctor. Now, he's a husband. Now, he's about to become a father. Not now. Yeah, don't, don't rush. Don't rush. We disciple even in all areas. Don't rush to get children. You will get them. There is a, if you want wisdom there, come and we talk. But he will, someday he's going to become a father. He is no longer the senior three boy that we met many years ago. But because we are mindful of the generation, now he's a husband. Wonderful. And this is what I'm saying. To Zimbe is all about that. From this building are going to raise so many lives with such stories. Young men who will turn into husbands. Young men who will become professionals. Young men who will become entrepreneurs. Young men who will become businessmen. Come on! So it's beyond the ticket that you're buying. You are investing in a life. You are investing in life transformation. Dr. Mirembe, who is the wife? I met Dr. Mirembe when she was in senior three. All right? Same story. Dr. Mirembe now is not a senior three student. Was it senior three? Yeah, senior three. Now is no longer a student. Now Dr. Mirembe is a doctor and now is also a wife. Who is going to become a, a kingdom mother. Yeah. Did you hear what I said? A kingdom mother. There's a difference between a mother and a kingdom mother. A mother is the one who says, That's a mother. You've had those mothers, eh? <laughs> what do you expect the child? The child also, you know, we, uh, at our house, behind our fence, there are kids, you hear them talking things. So you hear our kids saying, Why? Because they've heard from their mother saying, that's a very deep statement. Eh? It's hard. And when you think about it, you feel like the head is bursting. As a mother. But a kingdom mother doesn't say that. You understand? So she's going to become a kingdom mother. And the husband's going to become a, a kingdom husband. Why? Because there are lives that are being built. In this space that we are building, we are building a physical building. But lives are being built also. Yes. I will share with you a second one. Many years ago also, I met Mr. Mwanja. Mr. Mwanja is here. Please stand. I met him. St. Kudembe Hostel. Senior what? Senior six. St. Kudembe Hostel. In the hostel, in the dormitory, where there are deckers. And got interested in him. Also discipled this young man. Now he's no longer, well, he's still a young man. Mm, since I am, yeah. Now he's a husband. 
he is even a father now. But you see the thing, the difference between him and many other people, he's a kingdom husband. He's a kingdom father. He knows that marriage must be run like this. He knows that children should be raised in a godly way. He knows that every Sunday we are going to church. It's not about shall we go to church or shall we not to go to church? Do you understand what I'm saying? What are we talking about? We are talking about the next generation, raising the next generation. And in this, in this space shall come many more men like this and many more women like the wife. Come on, say amen. So when you buy your ticket, what you're doing is, I am investing in the second, in the next generation to see life being transformed. Thank you. Please have your seat. The wife is, the wife must be somewhere. Don't worry, but she's somewhere. Then, I'll give you one last one. Uh, Mr. Baka and Mrs. Baka. Mrs. Baka, Mrs. Mr. Baka is the head of our band here. By the way, I love it very much. Let me, let me make a very profound statement. I love it very much when we locally raise people. When I use the word locally raise people, I mean raising people from here. I love it very much. Because such people end up being very loyal people. Yeah, not jumpy, jumpy people. We have so many people who are hoping from church to watch and uh, church to church and they are problematic. Yeah. If you choose to come to community life, settle, settle and allow to be discipled. Nobody said yes. Yes, yes. So Mr. Baka, I met Mr. Baka when he was in first year university. And I met the wife when she was in senior three. Eh, there's something about senior three. There's something about three. That, that three number. I could preach a whole series on number three. Number three is the number of resurrection. On the third day, he rose again. Number three is a number of power. <laughs> eh, 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 fe, eh, uh, the Trinity. Uh, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Isn't that power? That's power. Who's saying no? Who's saying no? That's what the Bible, it's, it's, it's Trinity. And then what? Eh? Faith, ho it's a number of generations. Faith, hope, and love. Hey, uh, who? Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Could be someone there. But that's not where I want to go. But anyway, he was in, she was in senior three, and my wife discipled that young girl. One day, come on, one day, Mr. Baka came to me and said, I have seen a young girl. And I want to marry that young girl. I said, who is the young girl? Said, the young girl is called Evelyn. I said, okay. Let me check. I will get back to you. Now, let me tell you this. In this church, we help you to see properly, to make the right decision, and to enter marriage happily. I've been married 19 years. I've never slapped my wife. I've never punched my wife. I've never abused my wife. So I think I have the authority to talk. Yes. Yeah. Clap better than that. Yes. Yeah. Some husbands, man, they have punched, they have kicked their ash. But anyway, I checked. I went back. Because when you say you are interested in somebody, we check. We have parameters. We check. If you're a member of our church, we check. Yeah. One of the... We check many areas to see whether you are ready to take somebody's daughter. So we check. Now, some people... Some people will not allow that. They'll say, I have left the church. I have gone to Holy Ghost Restoration International Center. There's no spirit of God in community life. Because that's how some people function. They want to do, they, they don't want to follow, uh, they don't want to be under authority. They just want to do their thing. And if you do that, you'll be disappointed. So I checked, checked, checked. One of the major things I check is finance money. Because money tells you a lot about who a person is. Where the treasure of a man is, there their heart will also be. That's money. 
So one of the areas I check when you come and say, I'm, I say, we check money. Let's check your money. So we go back into our finance. And I tell the finance guys, pull out the tithing record of this person. So we checked many, many things, many. And for us, if you're going to get married, you have to pass all the parameters. You can decide to be married out of this place. But if you don't pass our parameters, we will not marry you. <laughs> or wed you. So, I went back to uh, Amos. And I said, Amos, you're not ready to be married. We have checked the parameters. There are, param there are some places where you need help. Now, why do, we, why do I first check money? Because money is a big deal. Money is a personal thing. But also, money contributes 52% of all the problems in marriage. That's its contribution. 52 So if you're able to deal with money, it means you have you have 52% of your problem sorted. So you deal with the 48. That's why you find a wife will come and tell the husband, I want to go to the salon. And then he says, comb your hair. Then the wife comes and says, I need a deodorant or I need a perfume. Go and shower properly. Then the wife now realizes, okay, personal things they will not buy. Uh, there's no salt. I don't know what you say. What do you say? Huh? I saw a clip one time of these comedians. By the way, Mr. Mwanja is also a comic man, a comedian man. Come. I saw a, a clip one time of a comedian who was trying to talk about things, just be economical at home. So he told all his kids, come, you want to shower? He had a piece of soap in his pocket. Did you see that thing? And then he would just put in the hair and say, go and shower. Go and shower. Go. And then he puts back his thing in the, in the pocket. Thank you, Mr. Mwanja. Can we just give him a big hand clap? But what we're saying is that if you're able to deal with money, then you've dealt with so many problems. So I told Mr. Buck, I said, we have checked many parameters and some of the parameters you don't pass. Go back. Leave that girl alone for one year. Some of them, are you my father? Come, mama, let's go. One year. He was a very good man. He listened. He did not come back after 12 months. 12 months is one year. He came back after 14 months. And he said, Pastor, I think now I'm ready. I said, let me check. I'll get back to you. So I went back and checked all the parameters and he had passed consistently for 14 months. He had done everything. Can we clap? Let's clap better than that. This is mindful about the next generation. So I said, now you are ready. This is what you will do. I won't tell you what I told them. Today, Mr. Baka is not a university student. He is not, uh, the wife is not a senior three girl that we met. Today, Mr. Baka has raised this band here. Can we clap? We enjoy the worship, right? Can we clap better than that? Yes. Today, he's a husband and today he's a father. But there's a difference. He's a kingdom man. He's a kingdom husband. He's a kingdom father. Say amen to that. Yeah, and there's been a beautiful journey behind his life. This is what Tuzimbe is all about. It's not just about putting uh, brick and mortar together. We're putting brick and mortar together so that from this space we can raise kingdom men and kingdom women. The world will be so much different. The solutions to the problems that we have today is not feeder. Huh? Yes. By the way, I am his best man. Yeah, And uh, he was the last man that I decided I would be a best man to. The next people I'll be a best man if they ask me are my children. Between now and then, chapter closed. But the reason why I became his best man is because if you have a man who is able to listen to you and say, by the way, I told them, I said, delete her number from your phone. 
wow. That's hard, eh? So I accepted. So when he came, after he came and we had, he said, Pastor, now can you be my best man? Of course. Because I know you will listen. Now when I tell you, love your wife. Is it her birthday? Take her out. She will, he will listen. He will take the wife out. Uh, he, do this for your wife. He will do it. Yeah? Nobody said amen to that. Yes. That is being mindful of the next generation. He's not a campus student, but he's a father now. So what we're doing here as we build this, we're going to raise fathers. We're going to raise men. We're going to raise women. We're going to raise ch godly children. We're going to raise business, uh, businessmen. We're going to raise entrepreneurs. Come on, yes. We're going to raise corporate people. But the key word is their kingdom people. Their kingdom people. That is exactly, again, what Tuzimbe is all about. It's not about, you know, just putting a 50K there. No, it's beyond a 50K. It is lives being transformed. Have you been blessed today? Let's give the Lord a big hand clap if you've been blessed. So look at...